Hi, my name's Ron Holly. I'm a retired painting contractor. I've been a general contractor. I've worked in this industry most of my life. I, everybody I knew when I grew up was in the in the trades. I went into the trades. I I did really good and just wanted to make some videos here to maybe let you guys know some of my secrets. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to buy paint. It sounds easy. It is, if you know what you're doing, it can be costly, it can be very, very um, um, troublesome. Uh, for this video, I'm using paint from my local Home Depot. I'm not recommending their brand. I'm using some of their paint offerings as examples for my educational video. You can find the same lineup and qualities and prices at most of the brand paint stores including Lowe's, Sherwin-Williams, Dan Edwards, Ace Hardware, and most other paint stores. You know, on the first day of work with my dad, we sat on the tailgate of the truck, and he made his own paint. He would buy a can of basic paint, which was linseed oil, so a filler or carrier, you know, some paint there and a tint. He taught me how to tint my own paint using a tint rack and a squeeze and a drop and so we would tint all the paints for the job and then box, combine them, so the color was consistent throughout the job. On exterior paint jobs, he would add about a thimbleful of pulverized lead to each gallon of paint, which added ultraviolet resistance. You know, I asked him why he didn't just buy a can of Lucite wall paint. It had just entered the market. And he said, I'm not going to pay $2 for a can of paint. I think that he was paying about 75 cents for the one gallon paint base. By the way, I eventually used some Lucite wall paint. It was so thick that the label said to add one pint of water to make it usable for brush and roller work. You know, times have changed. Now when I'm at the paint counter of my local paint supplier, I watch people come in and first choose a color and then go to the counter. The clerk asks them for the type of paint they want. These are examples of some of the options they are given. For this purpose, I'm using some leftover paint from my own storage room, so let's look at them. This is Bear Marquee Interior Flat Wall Paint, sells for $38.98 a gallon. This is Bear Premium Plus Interior Flat Wall Paint, sells for $25.98 a gallon. And this is Glidden Essentials Interior Flat Wall Paint, sells for $19.98 a gallon. There's a pretty good 38 to 19, that's a pretty good spread. So, what's the best choice? Is this one? Is this one? Is this one? So, the answer is really simple. What are you going to paint? Let's look at what's in a can of house paint. Uh, latex house paint is called the resin fillers, pigments, and a carrier. Selecting the best paint is a real trick. As a young painter who was working on government projects, example, Marine Corps Air Station, Yuma, Arizona base housing, I would get a specification sheet that would dictate the number of coats of primer and paint and the minimum dissolved solids and mills of the paint. Government specifications do not specify a brand of paint. I think it's unlawful. So the specifications would dictate the minimum dissolved solids of the paint we use. Dissolved solids is a measurement of what is left when the paint dries. I could get the paint anywhere, but it had to have that minimum dissolved solids. And the finished paint had to have a dry thickness of, say, three to five mils. Most of our work was prime in two coats, so three to five mils isn't that big of a deal. Knowing the percent of dissolved solids is a smart way to find out how well the paint will cover and how thick the paint will be when it dries. Using that figure, we can compute the theoretical spread rate, the cost per square foot of the paint. The formula for determining the theoretical spread rate of paint is P times 
1604 divided by m equals t. p would be the percent of solids by volume. You'd get that from the manufacturer's technical data sheet. 1604 is a coverage of one gallon of 100% solid paint at one mil. M equals mil thickness, anywhere from one to five mils, one and a half to two mils usually per, per uh, can. T uh, then is a theoretical spread rate. The percent of dry solids is available from the manufacturer's technical data sheet. I Google the manufacturer, then search for the paint. A link to the technical data sheet was usually on that page. When I was a young painter, they had that at the counter and you'd ask them and they'd tell you. To get the theoretical spread rate, I type the formula into the search bar of my Chrome browser. Example, marquee is 46% solids times 1604 divided by two, I get an answer of 368.92 square feet of coverage at two mils. The theoretical spread rate don't include absorption or waste, drips, spills, or overspray. Paint waste is usually 10 to 15% for residential house painting. But if you have a really heavy texture on your walls or stucco, or the surface will absorb a high percentage of paint, the TSR could be significantly lower. At 10% waste, the estimated spread rate would be 368.92, then we minus the 10% waste is, uh, and we'll get 332.03 square feet per gallon. Now it costs 38.98, we're getting 332.03, so it works out to 0.117 uh, cents per square foot using fair marquee pay. This figure doesn't include the tax fees, delivery, and storage costs. Let's look at some of the costs from our other sample paints. Look at premium plus, interior flat wall, 43% solids times 1604 divided by two mils give us 344.86 square feet of coverage. And we less 10% waste is 344.86 minus 3448.486 equals 310.474. Estimated cost per square foot, 25.98 a gallon divided by 310.374 equals 0 0.084 or 8 cents per square foot. Let's look at Glidden Essentials interior flat wall. It's got 38% solids times 1604 divided by two mils equals 3476 square feet of coverage. Now we take 10% waste is 304.76 minus 30.47 gives us 274.28 square feet of coverage. So if we take that figure and take it into the cost of 1998 divided by 274.28 and it costs about 0.73 cents per square foot, about 7 cents a square foot. You know, you can test the surface for absorption by taking a spray bottle of water and spray it on the surface to see if the water is absorbed quickly. You will want to see the water run off the surface. That would indicate that the surface won't absorb the applied paint. If the water is sucked into the surface, you're going to use extra paint, or you need to prime first. Primer is less expensive than paint. The gloss level of the paint will also change the percent of dried solids, and the amount of tint in the paint will change it. So you should check the percent of solids for each gloss level and color of paint you want to use. Keep in mind that the gloss level is determined by the amount of resin in the paint. I've used a flat interior wall paint for my examples so that I would have a consistency. 
Now, interior paint typical gloss choices are flat. Walls, bedroom, family room, living room, that kind of thing. Ceilings. Uh, not suitable for kitchen or bath because it doesn't clean well and, and it, it does absorb water. Now we have eggshell gloss. Um, good for walls and wood mark, woodwork. Makes walls easier to clean. Makes rooms appear a little bit larger. Um, Semi-gloss walls and woodwork. Makes walls easier to clean. Makes walls appear larger. I use a lot of this for my woodwork and kitchens and baths. And um, it, it's just a, a, a general really good paint. Then we have a gloss with walls, woodwork, in kitchen and bath, and work areas. Makes walls scrubbable. Okay, now before I said easy to clean, that means you can wipe them off easy. But a, a good gloss paint will be scrubbable. And you'll be able to scrub on it. Uh, the rooms in where you have a lot of problems, kitchens, baths, um, laundry rooms, things like that, makes rooms appear larger. Now, high gloss, I really don't use too much of that in residential work. It's mostly industrial or, or a lot of hospitals all have high gloss because it's uh, it's a really workhorse kind of paint. It makes walls easier to scrub. If you need to scrub them, you can do that. And the walls appear larger. They just wear better. It's a high traffic areas and commercial areas. There are other factors that determine how good a paint performs. The quality of the resin used, how finely ground the fillers are, how much tint base is in it, and how much gloss level, high, higher gloss level. Make sure to check your dissolved solid using the same paint that you intend to use on the project. Now you can make the argument that the paint can label declares the coverage is, for example, 400 square feet per gallon. Well, it is. If you were to take the paint and apply it to a piece of glass at one mil, it would cover the glass at about 400 square feet per gallon. In real life, there's always a reason the paint can't do that. It could be the texture or the absorption rate or the color underneath. This is just an industry standard for paint coverage comparisons. So why do all the paint distributors sell paints that have a dissolved solids of, say, 38%? The answer is simple. If you are doing new track home, construction, apartments, or any same color over same color work, you don't want to use a real thick paint. For example, an apartment will probably be painted five or six times more often than a residential home. If you were to use a thick paint every time before very long, the doors and windows would not close. The paint layers would be too thick. You would have to strip off the old layers of paint before repainting. It's a very costly and time consuming process. When you do same color or same color over on apartments, use a paint with a low percentage of dried solids. We call it maintenance paint. In the case of new track homes, if you ordered a first quality paint job for your new home, the cost would be added to the price of the home and be paid off over 15 or 30 years with interest. You would be paying for the paint long after it was replaced. It makes more sense to have the homeowner redo the paint themselves using quality paint in their colors. Now this doesn't matter if the home is bought for cash. A good rule of thumb when buying paint is use a high solid paint like their marquee for custom work and color changes. Use a medium solid paint like their premium pro for same color maintenance painting. Use a low solid paint like Lydon Essentials for same color paint in apartments 
and areas that get repainted often. Um, commercial grade stuff. Uh, one last thing though, if you have five or six houses that you're renting and you own, make them all exactly the same color inside and out if you can. There's nothing harder than to go into a house and try to figure out what colors everything is. Do it one color, same color on everything, and that's it. So there's uh, when when uh, a tenant moves out, you don't have to scramble to find out what kind of paint to get. You know what kind of paint, and you just take it there. Keep your inventory low. Now, one thing I want to talk about is paint extenders. Paint thinners act on the percent of solids and makes the paint thinner. A paint extender, on the other hand, adds to the quality of the paint and makes it work better. I use Flood Floetrol paint conditioner when I want an oil-like finish using a latex paint. Extenders are like adding extra paint to your project. They do not thin the paint. Remember to add the extender equally to all the paints so the color is consistent. So that is how to buy paint. I hope you have gained some knowledge and that it makes your job go smoother and costs less to do. Hope that I haven't made too many errors. I'm a contractor, not a teacher. If you have any questions, leave me a comment and I'll try to answer it. If you like this video, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.